Hello everyone, I am here today again with Jeannie Dietrich, who is the founder and CEO of Armit Dietrich, a Chicago-based integrated marketing communications firm. She is the lead blogger at the PR and marketing blog Spin Sucks and is co-author of Marketing in the Round. She is also co-host of Inside PR, which is a weekly podcast about communications and social media. And today, we are going to talk about new marketing trends and capitalizing on them ahead of the competition. Jeannie, how are you doing today? I am well, sir. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Stoked to uh, dig into this. I, I, as I stated right before we got started here, I'm very curious to see um, what is happening out there or what's about <laughs> to happen out there. So we're all depending on you to look into your magic glass. My crystal ball. Your yeah. crystal ball. My magic eight ball. Your magic, Got not out. the eight ball, not not the magic eight not, ball. That's oh, going to give us too, too, too much bad news. <laughs> the crystal ball <laughs> and let us know what's happening. So just to kind of dig into everything here, first off, um, just please give some direction on, I mean, obviously you're more versed in all this and you have your pulse on everything and you have your ways of doing it and you've been around for a long, long time, but not everybody uh, has been in this space. So, can what you What do you give, mean I've been around for a long, long time? In the marketing like world. In the marketing world. <laughs> not not in life. In life you're you're a, you're a young bird, but no, but uh or spring chicken, but in the marketing world you have uh you've cut your teeth and you know what's going mm -hmm. on. But not everybody uh -huh. not everybody's doing podcasts, not everybody's a co-host of Inside PR. And so everybody, uh, most people out there are not uh or, or you just really don't know, you know, everybody wants to stay on top, right? But not everybody sure. knows, you know, how to get going with that, what direction where one should start. So just give your advice before we really dig into the nuts and bolts of everything. Uh, how, how can someone stay on top of any new trends that are developing? Or in other words, what advice can you give to help other marketers or business owners spot a current trend that is developing or about to develop? So I'm going to relate a story of when I really was 22 years old, and I had a boss who knew everything. You would ask her a question about upcoming trends or where the industry was going, and she could tell you exactly. And I remember at the time thinking, how the heck does she do this? Like, I, I can't understand, A, how she can stay up on all of this stuff, and B, where she's getting all this information. And it turned out that she was just reading. And I think that that's what it is, is you just have to pay attention to, you know, what you would consider the influencers are talking about. You know, go to conferences, read blogs, watch videos, watch your Facebook Live, pay attention to what people are talking about, not necessarily in the trending topics, but what, you know, the influencers in, in your industry are um, talking about. And you can start to see you know, what's happening in terms of the in, your, the industry you're in or the marketing industry, mm -hmm. you can start to see little pockets of trends because that's what people are talking about. Cool, yeah. And, yeah, and I couldn't agree more. I um, sometimes feel way smarter than I am just because when somebody mentions something, I'm like, oh, yeah, 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 I've read about that or I know about that. And you don't realize that the people that – or you might not have realized, but the, that the people you're following, these, you know, experts in the industry – they're the top 0.0001% of people right. who know anything about marketing. I mean, right. you know, you take you take the world, and some people are engineers and doctors, and they don't know anything about marketing. Then you even get right. into the marketing <laughs> field, and then those people are the top 0.1% of that. So, yeah, that's a great point, and, and, and I've noticed that too. And one thing that I, I personally do is I, you know, follow people like you, you know, on Twitter and, and everything, but then I – you know, the Twitter feeds are so much, right? So right. you can't really follow anybody. So what I, you know, you can do those lists and you can create, I, I have a best experts list and you're on it. And so yeah. I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way you can like, you, you can filter through, you know, pick your top five, 10, 15, 20 people. And yeah, I've noticed, man, yeah. And I have my readings from them and I, yeah, that's, that's one idea that I have that, that has helped me personally, you know, stay on top. You're right. I, I hadn't really thought about, you know, why I kind of know some of this stuff, but it's it's because of following people like you. Well, that's great. Yeah. It's a great and pointer. Having, a Twitter, and, and I'll, having a Twitter list is a really good idea because then you're you can kind of filter out all the noise and just really pay attention mm -hmm. to the the people you think are going to give you the right the best information. Yeah, no, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I don't even look at my regular Twitter feed. I just uh, no, watch I don't the, uh, yeah. the expert one, and because it's not overwhelming and it's 
all good stuff. It's all good stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, and then signing up for newsletters and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's a great pointer. I mean, it sounds um, simple enough, but, again, a lot of the time, a lot of things in marketing – are uh, just that it's just right in front of your face but you just got to be you know have your attention brought to it cool yep. so but how, how do you then how do you determine you know and speaking of trends you know this is good to stay on top of you know not necessarily like trends almost only but you know trends also but how do you determine how, how have you determined whether it's a passing or a long-term trend <laughs> well that that's one? difficult because um, you, you have to test it yourself. So, like, I can give you some examples. At the beginning of this year, Peach was the new social network that everybody was talking about. We've had Ello. We've, of course, had Google+. You, you, you just kind of have to use it to figure out if it's something that people are going to be using or not. And Snapchat's a really good example where it was a, a trend for a few minutes, and now Instagram seems to be taking it over, and um, it, it may not – exist a year from now. So you kind of have to just test it and try and figure it out for yourself. You know, some things are going to work really well for business. Some things are going to work really well personally, and some things are not going to work at all. So it really is just a trial and error kind of thing. Cool. Now, what about, uh, now, you know, this is looking into your crystal ball here. <laughs> Do you have any, any pointers on how to anticipate stuff trends before they happen. I mean, I, I know that probably goes to, that's how you make a billion dollars, right? But no, I think I, it's, no. What I do you think it's, say? Um, I think it's ex experience. Um, and, you know, I'm, I was joking about how long I've been in the industry, but, you know, it does come with, with wisdom, and the older you get, the more wise you get, of course. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's it's a couple of those things, but it's also being able to look at something and go, you know, this is really interesting, and I don't know how or when it's going to affect what we do. But like, I'll give you a good example, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. I believe sure. artificial intelligence is going to change the job of the marketer drastically in the next five years. But I don't know exactly how yet, and so I'm really paying attention to what AI is doing in other industries. You know, it certainly can replace more of the automated tasks that happen mm -hmm. in other industries, but there are lots of automated tasks that we do. And, you know, when is it going to kind of, kind of take over and how do our jobs evolve? So even though I'm not going to say that that's necessarily a trend for next year, it's something that I'm definitely researching and keeping an eye on. Cool. But how would you go about deciding if a new trend is something that you should invest your time, energy, and possibly money into? You know, do you have any sort of – benchmark, like, okay, we really need to get going on this, or is it more about, and again, try, I understand, Jeannie, I understand some of these questions are going to be incredibly hard to answer because you're trying to, you know, give an answer that, a, you know, that will span across everybody's personal situation, and as we know that all of them are unique, but just in general, though, like, do you have any indicators, like, when you go, okay, now I'm going to spend, you know, a lot more time, you know, and energy, you know, keeping an eye on AI is one thing, investing into it is another, right? So yeah. what, what do you, what do you, any, any, any advice there, how you go about it? And again, I understand there's not going to be a cookie cutter answer for everybody. Yeah. I mean, I really do think it comes down to experience. It's, you know, knowing when something's going to change your industry or shake it up. I mean, we, we all knew that there, when Twitter was launched, there was something about this Twitter thing, but we didn't really know what it meant or if it could be used from a business perspective or, you know, was it just B2B or, or B2C or what could B2B use it as well? Like, we didn't know. And so we sort of just tested it out and we tried different things and we figured out where it works and where it doesn't. And then other social networks came into play um, from that perspective as well. So I think it's, it's experience. I think it's trial and error. I think it's research. I mean, you can look at things like from a global perspective, like self-driving cars, you know. If you're an, an Uber driver or a cab driver or a um, semi-driver, those are things that are going to affect your – that's going to affect your job. Self-driving cars are going to affect your job. So, you know, you look at things like that from a global perspective, and though they're not here yet, it's something that the national media is talking about. Solar roofs that, um, from Elon Musk, you know, even though it's going to be way too expensive right now for everybody to put a solar, solar roof on their homes, 
it's something that you should be thinking about. How does that, does that change your industry, change your job based on the industry you're in? So I think if you can pay attention to, to global trends, you know, that like the Wired magazines of the world are talking about and figure out, okay, is this something, I'm just going to keep an eye on this and as my experience and wisdom goes into play, there's going to be a trigger point that's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. No, I hear you. So what do you personally do when you when you spot a potential trend? What steps do you personally take to, I, I, I say move forward, but I guess the first moving forward is is keeping an eye and, and testing yeah. it out and stuff. But yeah. what, what do you, do you assign like somebody, hey, dig into this or what, do you do it personally or what, what do you personally do when you see something coming up that you want to try out? I do it personally, um, you know, because AI is on my radar, I've been talking to friends who are in the industry. Um, I had a conversation with Chris Penn a couple of weeks ago from Shift Communications because IBM is a, is a client of theirs, and I was asking him about Watson and what that means, and, you know, he's he's pretty close to it, so he was able to give me some information uh, that I don't think is necessarily out there in the world. So, you know, making building relationships with influencers in your industry, building relationships with journalists, at, at conferences, having conversations with people about the kinds of things that you think are going to affect it. So it's, it's that research phase. Um, right now, I think where AI does affect marketing is in the chat box, um, you know, and what Facebook messaging Messenger is doing with chat bots and being able to order things. Virtual assistants, I mean, you can have a virtual, a virtual assistant who doesn't exist schedule meetings for you. It's a, it's a robot. So I think that's right now where it's affecting the marketing industry in particular. Um, but, you know, our clients certainly aren't ready for that. So it's just something that I'm keeping an eye on from that perspective. Gotcha. So you, you're, you've kind of dipped into this, and I would like to spend some time here, and let's talk about some new trends that you see coming up. You kind of mentioned um, – the messenger stuff, and I actually just saw we've seen a lot about it, but I think just within the hour i I was checking my expert best expert Twitter feed, and I <laughs> saw uh Jay bear uh tweet out about that, you know about messenger and i I've been hearing yeah, this yeah, for about yeah. a year now. It's just a matter of how do you uh how do you automate and make it personal, <laughs> right? So it's it's just one of those things. It's just difficult. But I know messaging apps uh, might be a good place to start to talk about some trends. So let's let's talk about that for a little bit, and then and then I'd like to hear you know some other trends you see coming up. Well, so I saw Andy Crestavina last week, and he said I can't remember how it came up, but he has a virtual assistant named Amy, and Amy does not exist. But you would not know that Amy is a robot because. He will email you and copy Amy and say, you know, I'd like to schedule a meeting for blah, blah, blah. And then you respond to Amy and she's, she's like, she schedules it and it's very personalized. You you really have no idea that it's a robot. Um, and then you'll email Amy and say, oh my gosh, Amy, I'm so sorry. I'm not going to be able to make it. Can we reschedule? And she says, sure, no problem. Here are some dates that Andy's available. <laughs> you have, literally have no idea Amy doesn't exist. So yeah, I mean, to, to your point about it not being personal, it's very personal and kind of scary that, yeah. you know, artificial intelligence, I mean, I guess that's why it's called artificial intelligence, because it's very, very intelligent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, on a side note, do you watch that Westworld show? I do. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. It's all, yeah totally I wonder crazy. when that's going to happen. The robots happen. are taking over. They are taking over. They are taking over, which is a good and a bad thing, but good if you work it the right way and utilize it the right way. Right, right. Um, totally agree. So is there anything else you want to touch on, on like the Facebook Messenger or, you know, like KIP, I believe it's called, um, you know, some of these other messaging apps? Do you, do you have any insight on, you know, where it's headed, uh, maybe where to learn more about it, where to – uh, how, how to utilize it if you are utilizing it for anybody, if you have any clients utilizing it, because I know it's kind of a hot topic. It's been one, but I think it's starting to ramp up even more now. Yeah. I mean, we're using it just from like a, we're not, we don't have any clients using it yet, uh, mostly because we do, you know, really manufacturing B2B stuff. Um, um, so we are really focused on it from, you know, feeding us news. Uh, you know, the right kinds of news that we need, and we're trying to keep a, a very fair and balanced look at it, um, at news, because, you know, there's so much 
not fair and balanced out there right now and fake. Um, we're using it oh, for, yeah. I've been using it to schedule things like I had my mastermind group in town last week, so I had the messenger bot um, schedule all of our dinners and, and drink locations and do all the reservations. So I just said, this is how many people, this is the time, this is the area we'll be in, and the, the bot took care of it, which was amazing. I didn't have to, like, call restaurants or do open table or anything. It handled all that. So, you know, from a personal perspective, I think it's it's there, and you can use it how you like. From a business perspective, it's not quite there, unless, of course, you are a restaurant or your, you know, B2C is all, always ahead of B2B. So, you know, making 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 and taking reservations and those kinds of things, um, it's it's really good for, but it's not quite there from a B2B perspective yet. Yeah, but you save hours of time there. So what what do you use for your for that? Um, I just did it through Facebook Messenger. Oh, just through Facebook Messenger? Yeah, and yeah. You set it up and they, they take care of it all, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's nice. Well, what else but do you see out there? Even think about even think about like your Amazon Echo. Do you have an Echo? Uh, I don't think so. My wife. Oh, so you need you need you need, an, you need an Echo. Well, we, but I, here's I have the thing. a uh, Alexa, but we don't have. Oh, that's yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, like, you can do you can do all sorts of things with this. I mean, you start out by using by saying Alexa play. Billy Joel on Spotify, and it does it automatically, so you don't have to go into your phone and open Spotify and find Billy Joel. And I, I mean, it certainly is making us lazier. You can say, you can be cooking <laughs> and say, and run out of salt and say, Alexa, add salt to my shopping list, right? So it's, yep. it's, hap it's doing all of that for you. But now you can also add skills. So you can play games with Alexa where, I mean, you can play hide and seek with Alexa. I'm sorry, I keep <laughs> saying her name and she keeps beeping on. I should turn up, I should unplug her. Um, I got a tip so, for you. Yeah. You can you can make her cuss if you say Simon says. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a trick we found out. <laughs> that's awesome. But there's yeah. like I mean, this world that we live in is very minority reportish. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's definitely going to affect business and marketing in the next couple of years. Sure. So what else? What else do you see out there coming up? You know, um, from my perspective, um, you really tracking um, your efforts and measuring, especially from a public relations standpoint, measuring against real business goals, business outcomes. I think it's really hard for marketers in general to do that, and so we we continue to sort of push that. Uh, video, you know, we you've got Facebook Live, you have Periscope, you have. Instagram stories, you have Snapchat, you have all of this video, 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 video. And so, you know, finding ways to use that in interesting and compelling ways. We have a client, it's so fantastic, they make doors and locks. So, you know, not a, an interesting business, business by any stretch of the imagination. They did the mannequin challenge and had the video, had a video professionally shot. It is the most fantastic thing I have ever seen, ever. And you get to see their warehouse and their, you know, office staff and all that acting like mannequins. It's fantastic. So using yeah. video in interesting ways like that, you know, letting people see sort of the innards of your company without giving away company secrets, um, you know, you can take advantage of those kinds of things from a video perspective. Yeah, no, and a lot of this comes down to here are the tools, but hey, uh, you still gotta be creative, right? Still yeah, gotta, you, do have, to you know, be you creative, have them, yeah. but you gotta, you, you can't, you know, you're not gonna find a magic wand or an answer and like use this and it's gonna kill it. No, here's a tool to use right. and right. take your creativity and you know, or whomever's creative around you and 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 think think through, you know. But you need to know that these things exist. Um, so that you can then apply it. So that that goes back to keeping you know keeping your pulse, constantly reading and staying you know following these experts, and and they'll they'll lead you in. What's great about all you know pretty much every expert I've ever come across is they love sharing information, right? They yep. they know yep. that you know the more they give, the more it comes back, and they might be giving away almost an SOP or you know an order of instructions of how they do something, yep. which yep. in the past would have been company secrets, and now it's like. Screw it. Here, do it yourself, right? But right. Here, here, you know, I can do it better. So, um, but yeah, so they're, they're very good at, at, at uh, just giving away everything, really. So you just got to stay on top of it. Um, what about, um, we've talked about this in the past a long time ago, and now some more time has passed. Um, thing is a podcast we did, if everyone wants to go check it out, on virtual reality. <laughs> but again, more 
time has passed. Has anything changed in the last six, nine months on virtual reality you know, that I'm you see coming to up? Decide. I can't decide on it because I feel like, you know, we've got the 360 photos, which are cool, but don't really do much, right? I mean, it's cool if you want to see the Louvre or you want to go to the Art Institute in Chicago or you, you know, it's that kind of stuff is really cool for. Um, but I'm trying to decide if we're actually going to just piggyback over virtual reality and go right into AI. And I kind of think we're going to because there isn't a really, other than, you know, the, the businesses games. that make sense, <clears throat> video games, uh, museums, you know, things like that where it totally makes sense. But I don't think it, I think the rest of the business world is going to jump over it. And it's it. so expensive. I mean, I, I I can't, again, this is the famous last words of somebody who isn't on a trend, but I can't imagine virtual reality becoming mainstream due to costs. I, I just can't. I'm trying to wrap my brain around, like, how or when mainstream people will either – now, of course, <clears throat> you know, costs come down on everything if you look at it what microwaves used to cost in the 1970s sure, it blows your sure. mind, right? So costs come down, but still, it's like, how, when is that going to come down? And then, then you got to have the producers part of it, which, you know, video costs aren't good. So, yeah, I'm, I, I'm just, yeah, I just keep, you know, keep my eye on it, but I'm trying to find a way where it becomes more mainstream for non-big production budgets because you need that right. if you're going to you produce a virtual you experience. Yes. Well, you're right. They heard, you still I, do the 360 videos and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, and that's easy. That's, very affordable. That's affordable, yep. Totally agree. But I don't necessarily know that it makes sense for other businesses. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I hear you. No, but you say AI. Um, I guess is that more the chatbots and stuff like that, or are there other applications you see on the horizon where, you know, what are some other things that AI would span and, you know, gives us some Give us some tangible examples of how that might, you know, how if gonna, we leapfrog. It's going to span everything. I mean, my friend Chris was telling me about a, a girl who had a certain strain of leukemia, and her doctors, her physical doctors, couldn't figure out what it was, and so they put her um, her blood profile into Watson, the IBM Watson. And it came, it spit out in 30 seconds a diagnosis, and it was correct. Mm -hmm. And it was something that, you know, her doctors couldn't figure out. So you have it, for, so if it can do that, think about all the things in your job that you do the same way every day that it can take over. So if it can figure, if it can diagnose a certain strain of, of leukemia in 30 seconds, it, like, it's here. It's going to change the way that we do our that we do our jobs. And you know, you, they keep talking about how the kids that are starting school right now are preparing for jobs that don't exist yet, and we don't know what they'll be. But that's because artificial intelligence will be doing so much of what exists today. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's good news as well, as, as, at least from a business owner um, uh, take on it is. There is so much talent coming in to the marketplace with all these different things, which will keep the cost down on, on on it all. You know, like what four or five years ago, every developer coming out of college was asking for six figures, and now right, <laughs> right. now they're you know they're getting you know uh, paid probably a third or a quarter. I mean, a third to half of that now. You know, just yeah. because yeah. supply simple supply and demand. But it's also good in general, though, just for the world, Mark. You know, if you have all these people who are learning this other, this other, this other skill set, it's it's nice to just to have more people out there, doing, you know, figuring stuff out and doing stuff. But yep. but again, totally it's 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 it, there's just so much talent that that's coming in with those skill sets, and I totally see it. Um, so, uh, what about the B two B world? Any anything anything coming up that uh, you see? I know there's all talks of automation, and you know that's kind of a little bit. Old, old, right? Isn't that crazy? But uh, I anything that you um, you see out there that uh, we should keep our eye on? Yeah, I definitely would be looking at video because I don't think anybody's doing it. I don't think it's oversaturated by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. um, I also would be looking at um, beginning to collect 
cell phone numbers so that you can do text campaigns versus email campaigns. Oh, and you don't want to give up. You don't. Yeah, you don't want to give up email yet. But I think we're we're on the verge of it texting the texting campaigns becoming more efficient than email. Um, and that's the whole hmm. messenger app stuff too, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yep. Have you done that? Yeah, like, have you have you have you found out that it's decently easy to get an email a phone over an email or is it more It is decently easy, yes. Um we have probably a database of if I were to just guess off the top of my head about two thousand um cell phone numbers. We haven't used mm -hmm. some of them yet, but we mm -hmm. have them. Well that's good. And, and on the side note, you can turn those in I mean, you're gonna need a lot of phone numbers, but you can eventually turn those into Facebook custom audiences. And, yep. and stay in front of them yep. that way as well. Yep. So yep. yeah, that's yep. cool. So just you know, your, your advice to B two B world is get get involved in video. And, and again, yeah. to my point earlier, is video is becoming more uh, affordable now. Of course, you want to get the right talent and everything, and it's still not going to be as cheap as the written word, but it's not like virtual reality. You know, I mean, you you can get videos done out there. There's a lot of talent out there that yeah. is wanting to do more video work. And, and yeah. you're right. I don't think it's saturated at all. Um, just look at your Facebook feed, right? right. Uh, how, how much? How much are videos? You, know, you hear, you hear video, 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 but you don't see them as much as you would think, as much as you've heard about it. And I guess that's just the whole like, well, what do we do? What do I shoot? But right. Um, right. just think about it. Like, what kind of message do you want to get out there? It could just be a doctor talking and giving a tip, but you know, it's personalized that way. What about um, in the BDC world? Uh, anything? Yeah. Anything coming up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's everything that we've been talking about because all this stuff hits B2C way sooner than it does B2B. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I I still want to see every business being smarter about their metrics and about, you know, creating, actually tracking effectiveness, um, paying attention to your brand ambassadors and, you know, what um, what they're saying. My My big challenge right now is, you know, as we just experienced through this election, there was a lot of fake news that was shared, and people's mm -hmm. decisions were based on things that were factually incorrect. And yeah. so, when you when you look at that from an election standpoint and how successful it was, you have corporations who say, "Well, what if we did that to our competitors?" And while it's not ethical and it's not right, um, it's going to happen. And so, I think. Every organization, B2C and B2B, have to sit down and say, okay, if our competitors start to create fake news about us, what do we do? How do we handle it? Who's going to help us fight that fight? And sure, you can take care of it legally, and that will take care of it, but that could be hundreds of thousands of dollars and years upon years upon years, um, and you will have already lost in the court of public opinion. So I think we have to be really paying attention to, you know, have that discussion internally. What what will we do? Just like we're if if you're hacked, what will we do if we're hacked? Who needs to know? How do we handle it? What's the chain of command? Same thing with fake news. If somebody's out there talking about us and it's just not true, what are we going to do? Hmm. That is a tough one, huh? Have you have you had any yeah. experience or seen anybody deal with that yet? Because yeah, obviously it's a well, huge topic. I think Zuckerberg even got involved in it, right? Yeah, and, Zuckerberg uh, has to get involved, and Google's involved. I mean. There are two examples that come to mind right away, and one is that Trump tried to say that he, he was responsible for Ford not leaving the U.S., and yeah. they were never going to leave the U.S. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the well, they even said that is, during the election. That was what was yeah. great. Yeah. How do you keep yeah. being able to say something and then those I same people know. are like, nope, not true, but nobody <laughs> watches that. They just turn off the election or the debate well, and, and then like, okay. Yeah, I think that's what we have to be really concerned with as business owners is what if – that happens to us. I mean, it's happening to the Pepsi CEO right now. Everybody's saying that she told that she said that if you supported Trump, you shouldn't buy Pepsi. She never said that. She never said it. That's crazy. Same with uh, yeah. Buffett, I believe it was, right? Or yep. I think yep. it was his tax. He's like, nope, not true. Here are my tax returns. Not true. <laughs> yeah, right. maybe, uh, yeah, maybe if you know anybody that can get to Mark Zuckerberg, tell him to create a – a Facebook fact checker or something like that. Well, you know? I think that's the next step. You know, he came out um, and said, 
you know, we're paying attention and certainly any, any fake news site cannot have access to our ad network, which is where they're making money, which is part of the reason that they're doing it. But you also have to be prepared for the people who aren't doing it to make money. They're doing it to um, kill their competitors or kill a reputation. And that's where communications or PR comes into play, right? Because you have to, you have to be really diligent about that. I mean, you could have that happen to you. I could certainly have it happen to me. And what do you do? when somebody's out there saying you said something that you didn't say. It's frustrating. Frustrating. Frustrating place we are in this world. But but the good news, at least a little bit, is that you know, a company like Facebook, who is the mega giant as far as communication goes in this world, probably probably I mean for sure number one, right? Um, they uh, they seem to care. They seem to care about it. I mean just from a I think it's from a business aspect and, you know, I think they have as much money as they're ever going to need, so I th hopefully they're able to in a position to make decisions that aren't based on money. Right. And um, so let's let's hope that they come out with something because it is very frustrating. And it's just um, I think we also did a podcast on um, me and you did on um, journalism and, and integrity yep. and journalism, yep. and yep. it yep. just falls into that. And it, you know there aren't a lot of answers, but um, you know you need to need to be prepared. So what can you give somebody a resource to, to go to as far as how to deal with have you written a blog on that by chance? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have I have Okay. Um, you What's know, the URL link would, to it? I would do fake uh, just go to Spin Sucks and and do uh, search either fake news or crisis communications. Um, okay. I think both topics will help with that. Um, okay, cool. But yeah, I mean, I think it has to go into your crisis preparedness plan, and it's the same conversation that you should be having about cyber security. What happens if yeah. you're hacked? Yeah, yeah, good point. So that needs to be your next your next blog. What happens if we're hacked? Um, <laughs> get get on that. Get on that for All right, I'll, I'll okay. get on that. Okay. Well, what are some not so new trends that are, you know, somewhat still fairly recent? You talked about videos a little bit. Uh, in, in really imploring everybody to go that direction, and, and I couldn't agree more. But w what are some not so new other trends that are, are you know that marketers and business owners should be aware of, or maybe get a, a refresher, a reminder from you that they you know that they really need to get going with. So at Content Marketing World this year, I did a breakout session on um, email drip campaigns, and there were uh -huh. about six hundred there were about six hundred people in there, um, and I was shocked at how few people actually do some sort of email market, automation marketing um, marketing automation it was it was shocking it was it was less than 1% who were actually doing it um, mm -hmm. so even though we're talking about email marketing and we're talking about marketing automation and we're talking about drip campaigns nobody's actually doing it and truthfully it's not brain surgery it's not hard to do and you can create all sorts of campaigns where you are engaging a prospect and then a customer in their buying process. And you can give them the right kinds of content to help them make decisions either to buy the first time or continue to buy to upsell them or whatever it happens to be. There's so many things that you can do and that can all be automated. Now, of course, there are yucky ways to do it, right? I mean, I think we've all gotten the emails that it's like, I saw you opened my email last week and you haven't responded, so you must be stuck under a file cabinet. Reply to me, and you know, like we've whatever. That's bad email marketing. Yeah. What, yeah. What's good email marketing is figuring out the buying process, and your marketing funnels, and kind of and pushing people through that, and it works extraordinarily well. Yeah, and let's touch on that. I'll, I'll, I think I can answer why a lot of people haven't done it. Just, I mean, we 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 currently are, but there are still some some things that we're tweaking and figuring out to apply to other clients and stuff. But uh, you're right. It is simple to set up. You you know, there are all kinds of platforms there. You know, first there was, you know, you have all your big players out there, your Pardos, Marketo, Actons, HubSpot of the world that have these automation features. Uh, and But now there's a lot of lesser expensive options. So, yes, you're, there's really no excuse to at least not to start to dig into it. But what I think what holds people – from moving forward on it um, is the strategy behind it. Like you mm -hmm. mentioned the um, buying cycles and all that, but like, well, how do I know where they are with that? So, you know, I, I know we're kind of digging into this, but I think it's it's going to be very helpful for people. I know we, we could do an entire podcast on this, and I 
probably will have one scheduled on this, but um, since we're talking about it, what, what is your like thought process on you know the strategy behind setting up these drip campaigns? Like, do you feed them? a piece of content that, you know, there's either, what, three, five, or seven stages of the buying cycle based on who who's, mm-hmm. who you've read mm-hmm. upon. But, mm-hmm. you know, even even with the three to the seven, they, they all kind of apply. So do you take, you know, pieces or write pieces of content that fall uh, under each one of the three, five, or seven stages and then just serve those in order and eventually ask for some sort of sign-up or call or whatever? Like, what do you – like that, explain that part because I think that will help you know maybe you know um, give some people some ideas and some on, on how to implement. So let me tell you how we do it with a new subscriber. So you subscribe Perfect. to Ben Sucks, and you automatically get an email from me that says "Welcome to the community." Um, don't be intimidated. A lot of the people who comment have been commenting for years, and so there's lots of inside jokes and, you know, people teasing one another. We've had a wedding where the, the couple met in the comments on Spin Sucks, and then they met in person, and then they started a date, and then they got married. Like, so I tell that story in the first email. Um, cool. There's an email that goes out, I think it's every other day for, for two weeks. And those emails are, you have to under, there are certain things you have to understand to read this blog, because there are certain things we talk about a lot the PESO model, paid, earned, shared, and owned media, um, influencer relations, um, leadership tips, women's equality. There are things that we talk about all the time. So I give new subscribers that information so that they're caught up to where everybody else is if they've just come in. Uh At the end of each of those emails, I have a PS. PS, um, if you want to learn how to master modern PR, we have an online course, blah, blah, blah. We offer it to new subscribers for about half of what we offered it when we launched it initially. Um, It's self-study. They don't get access to me or anything like that, which is, you know, there's lots of benefits for doing it for the full price. But, you know, it's like a way, way, way scaled back version. And in Uh that, so so in those two weeks emails, it's the PS at every, there's a PS at the bottom of every of those emails. We sell about, we we sell between six and eight of those a day. Wow. Yes. And it's just and the PS. The, That's a great point. I, let me let me just, just emphasize that for everybody. You're you're able. So basically, what you're able to what you're doing is you're giving content and asking at the same time, but you're doing it in such a soft way yep. that it's not intrusive at all, and you don't have to have a dedicated email that goes out asking for that. It's just on the right. PS, and yep. that's on the first email, second email, third it's on email, every all of email. them. All, every that's email. a fantastic idea. That's a way to get around having to send that gross. I mean, gross. I mean, let's. I mean, we're in sales, right? Yeah, it's gross. But, yeah. But you know what I mean. You know. So yeah, yeah that's great. Okay, go ahead. So you have the PS. So two. Go out. It's content, 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 content with the PS, and then at the end of the two weeks, they get an email that's specific to that online course. So it's here's, and they only get that if they've not purchased. So we've set okay. up the automation to to weed all those out. If they purchase, okay. they don't get that. And then the very last email they get is. Essentially, what it, the objective is that it sells. We, I have this mastermind group that's made up of PR firm owners, and so I'm always I, I'm always looking to add new people to that. And so the, the very last email is, occasionally I like to spend time with PR firm owners, and we get to talk about you know their business plans and their strategies and their growth objectives and all those kinds of things. If you'd like to apply to spend an hour with me for free, here's how you do it. And then there's an application. It goes to my assistant, my assistant uh, vets it all, and if it's somebody who looks like they would be good for the mastermind, I spend an hour talking to them on on Zoom where we, you know, have a video chat, um, and then I determine whether or not they'd be a good fit for my group. If they're not, Mm -hmm. then they just go on their merry way and continue to read Spin Sucks. If they are, then they go into a different email campaign. Okay, so that's what, yeah, okay. So the two weeks goes, what, what if they never reply? If they never reply, does, does then they just, just they just get the they just get the blog post, yeah. Then, then it just ends, and so you basically have, and so you start. You don't do any driven campaigns outside of people who sign up, correct? Nope. Well, we okay. do, but it, we do them um, um, every two every two months versus that's that's the only ongoing thing they get, and it's right when they sign up. And then then it ends, and then they're out, and then they just get your content, and then if they're ever mm-hmm. going to reach out to you, mm-hmm. they'll reach out to you. But but those all are triggered on signups. Not like, 
a list of prospects that I've had over the years or whatever that I'm going to start to reach out to. No, it's – yeah, it's definitely they've subscribed. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, that's a great example because, you know, it, it, that's the thing. Like, we're, you know, buying – that, that confuses people, like, where they are in the stages of buying. Like, well, I, 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 how the hell am I supposed to know that, right? But so <laughs> you kind of just lead, you lead them through based on yep. different pieces, and then hopefully yep. they're on one of those stages of the buying cycle, right? Okay, very cool. Well, um, what, what is um, – do you have anything else you want to mention? Any other not-so-new trends? I would say that's probably the big, big, big one. Is yeah, you know, I was I was truly shocked because I said how many of you are using email drip campaigns, and about six people. <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, it is a needle mover. Email is a needle mover. Now the thing about it's emails is it's really effective. Yeah, it, it's 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 huge. But again, it it all ties together. You got to be putting the content out to get people's right, attention, to sign up and do all that. But then once you do that, like, yeah, okay, now, now don't waste this opportunity. So yeah, good stuff. Now, w what is a trend you are so glad went away? <laughs> I'm sure you have a couple. Um, you know, I got this question ahead of time and I can't think of one because there's a, it has to be. Let's wait this out together. I'm sure. But there's I'm sure there's there's some even things. the trends that have gone away, you still learn something from. Okay, that is such an optimistic viewpoint. That's very, <laughs> very, very sweet of you to say that for all these trends. But, uh, MySpace is thanking you right now. Um, well, cool. What, what yeah, if you were? MySpace uh, had a had a had a time and a place. I mean, it was there and when it was there. It was there for a purpose. I mean, yeah, it's fine that it's gone away now because it hasn't hurt business or anything. But you know, Twitter, I think, is eventually going to go away because they yeah. are having huge issues. I'll be sad to see it go, just from the perspective of it drives a ton of traffic. Um, yeah. But you know, it certainly has declined in its use for us over the years. Well, tell them to stop making mistakes. Tell them to stop right. uh, <laughs> moving share counts and tell them to do better targeting and you know they, you know that's yeah that's the thing with Twitter you know it's they they seem to be making I don't know who's at the head of there but it's they're not they I don't know I, I've just been very confused by stuff that they have done and and now you hear stuff like this I mean look they just had to get rid of Vine you know that's I know I know I mean that's that's gargantuanly horrible to do to people. You know, I mean, granted, yeah. you have yep. the Joe Polizzi's of the world and everybody else, uh, you know, in the content marketing world, saying, "Hey, don't, you know, you know, don't, what, what is it? Don't build your house on rented land." I mean, right. and granted, right. those have been out there. But I mean, once you get going, oh, this is working great. I mean, you, I mean, no matter how many times people tell you that, you're still going to be like, "Well, okay, but this is awesome. You know, this is working great." But then it just went away. Just went away. You know, yep. and that's. That's just horrible, but it's it's a possibility, you know. So that that goes with the whole trends, you know. Stay on top, and if you would have been on the trend of content marketing, you would have realized that you would have been building your own database and building your own traffic yes. and your right. own right. blog and right. your own email right. database and all of that. So, so yeah, that, that's unfortunate. Uh, but what if you had a dream marketing trend? Put your marketing god hat on, hat on, and tell me what could you start if you could. <laughs> I don't think it'd be a marketing trend. <laughs> All right, well, just give me any trend. Um, what would I start if I could? You know what? I take that back. Um, I mean, the whole purpose of Spin Sucks is to fight the perception that people have of the PR industry because people think that we're liars and spin doctors, and now all this fake news coming out is going to make make the reputation for the PR industry even worse. And so, I wish that there were a trend for. You know, they always say that the good guy wins last. I wish the trend were the opposite, that the good guy comes out first all the time, that we're not always looking for get rich quick, lose weight fast things, that we actually are rewarded for hard work and sticking with it, because those are the things that work. And yet, as human beings, we want to lose weight fast and keep it off. We want to get rich quick without having, you know, to spend 10 or 20 years working on it. And I would love to see that flip. I don't think it ever will because it's not human psychology, but I would love to see that. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah, and I hear you. I hear you. I have faith, though. I have faith. 
I have faith that people. <laughs> and that's awfully yeah. optimistic of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's a lot of good people out there. A lot, lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of good there people. Are, there are. But, there are um, and, and I do think a lot of our uh, expectations, at least as Americans, um, you know, living here in the United States, you know, the last five years have, you know, everyone's had to kind of push the reset button on expectations of yep. of what they should make and what they should do. Yep. And so, yep. I, you know, you, yep. I've, I've, I've just experienced that just, again, through the workplace and, you know, things have changed dramatically and, and for the better um, in that sense. Like they're not, you know, I know there's everyone she's saying entitlement is getting crazy, but I, I feel like it's at least it's slowed down a little bit. You know, it seems like people are starting to realize the reality of life and you got to work yeah. and you got to work yeah. hard. But, you know, that's what makes life fun. So um, any parting thoughts? Any parting thoughts? Well, you know, the Cubs were in the World Series. Yes. Congratulations. So I feel like I should just make that, put that out there to the world, even though it's been a few weeks. The Cubs won the World Series. Yes, um, they did. Very exciting. Best, best pretty game exciting. seven ever. Yes. Oh my yeah, gosh. I can't even imagine. Oh, my gosh. I can't even imagine. If, you definitely it don't have any insane. fingernails left. insane. Yeah, I have no fingernails left. I have no. I like chewed the inside of my cheeks. I was so nervous. Not, I know. Not, I mean, it was. I was standing on the couch yelling at the television, and then when they went uh-huh. into the tenth inning and a rain delay, I was like, "Oh my god!" That's crazy, <laughs> just crazy. But no risk, no reward. You got to put your emotions right. out there That's if you're right. ever gonna be able to. Holy be, cow. Get, Feel it, get that euphoric feeling. It's fun. That's that's what sports is about. That's what people who don't follow don't understand. Is just like that natural, crazy, amazing feeling. That you they get couldn't when you have written in. a movie script that good that well. Like it was just. Well, they perfection. they did. It was called fe- Fever Pitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was crazy. That was when the Red Sox <laughs> came back and beat the Yankees. It was during the filming of that. But besides yeah, that, yeah, yeah. besides that, you couldn't write another script. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. Well, how can people uh, continue to learn from you? Uh, Spinsucks.com is the best place. And go ahead and give your Twitter handle out. Oh, well, Spinsucks would Just actually spin screen the handles, but yeah, or I'm Jenny Dietrich, my name. Okay, and that's G-I-N-I-D-I-E-T-R-I-C-H, but that easier is. to remember at Spin Sucks. Cool. All right, well, Jeannie, hey, this was a lot of fun as always, and I hope you have yourself a great rest of your week, and we'll um, talk again hopefully soon. Thank you, thank you. Good to talk with you. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye.